Hello everyone and welcome back to Chronos Play's Final Fantasy VI Advance. Today, well, we're doing our second recording of this event because I tried new software and it didn't work. Yay, good job, Bannon. So today, we're actually protecting Bannon and the Esper from the invading empire. What do we do? Well, it's kind of like the event we had with the Mughals. I have already set up my characters in advance with the equipment I want them to. We are going to be uh, splitting up into three parties. And Mog here wants to explain. I'm just like, no. So, party number one. It's going to be party destroy everything you know and love with Terra, Gao, Locke, and Celis. These guys will destroy everything. Next party is team brotherly love. We get the brothers. They will have no issue dealing with whatever monsters come their way. And last but not least, we have Cyan. <clears throat> He's going to be uh, keeping Bannon company up here. So same premise as before. We switch between characters and move them around. When a soldier touches a character, we go into a random, not a random battle, but an encounter with them. Oh, if it isn't General Celis, the traitor. Excellent. Now I won't have to hunt you down later. So the way I'm going to be setting this up is there are two paths that all lead to Bannon. And I'm going to put Terra's group in one, and then I'm going to put Edgar's group in one. And Cyan's not going to be doing anything. Go! Go get those vile insects! Now, there are actually two different groups of monsters we will be facing through this as time progresses. Uh, one of them is kind of harder. One of them actually has uh, the Fido encounter, which can do a lot of damage to you. Uh, these guys, not so much. They're just corporals. Gao's going to be ma using mainly the guard leader uh, rage. I don't know why I keep not saying rage as soon as I say that. But yeah, 50% of the times he's going to be using uh, Wind Slash, which will kill everything. I have an airing on him. If I really wanted to up the damage, I would put another airing on him, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> I mean, his Wind Slash is going to cause over 500 damage most of the time, anyways. Now. Once we get <laughs> Edgar down a little bit, then I'll probably just speed up, not speed up, but like cut to when we actually have a new set of enemies to go over. Uh, the, the enemies will change when the uh, brown suited soldiers start attacking. The green ones are mostly just corporals. Uh, once we get to the brown suit, I believe hunting hounds, Fido and heavy armor will come. That's a good place for Edgar right there. Now, the two active parties mostly have green berets in them. The ladies do... Ooh, hunting hounds. I guess they come in the green ones as well. Uh, yeah, the... Well, all the soldiers here, except for heavy armor and the dogs, so pretty much just the corporals, are weak to poison because they're humans. Uh, as I was saying, every character aside from the ladies has a green beret on. So their health is a little higher than what it normally would if you didn't have those on. That's why if you look at my characters and compare them to yours, if you don't have the green bray on, I even with the same levels, I'll have higher hit points. That's just how it goes. It looks like we're reaching our next set of enemies. It's probably Fido. Oh no, it's a heavy armor. So yeah, heavy armors are the same ones we fought in South Figaro. The ones that handed Locke their ass, and they'll continue to hand him his ass here. They have very high physical attack. I think they start with the protect status, but Wind Slash cuts through defense because Gao. Now we should be getting the Fido enemies more common. I'm not sure if these are preset enemies or not. If we get another heavy armor, but like I said, I'm not sure if these are preset enemies like each individual sprite has the set encounter always, or if there's just a random chance, you'll run into that group of enemies. I don't know, I've never bothered to check. It's not really that important, because, I mean, if you're using the teams I have set up, these guys won't have an issue. I'm just keeping... Oh, Gal, I was kind of hoping you were going to use, you know, Wind Slash there, buddy. 
I keep uh, Celis and Terra mostly on standby for healing, because while these, this group is extremely strong, the enemies can and will hurt. Now I'm just kind of tied. Oh, right. You have Reflect On. By the way, you can put on Magic Take Barrier and get Reflect On. So now we're stuck using physical attacks. And Gao just won't use Wind Slash. What a jokester. Did I select the right rage? Despite all my rage, I'm still just Gao. Gao Gao, Mr. Thou. Yeah, Wind Slash. I know it's 50% of the time, but still. He just did normal attacks 100% of the time until that time. Now, Terra will likely level up sometime here. If she Actually, I think she has already. She probably learned Drain. I probably even mentioned that last time. Hey, there's Fido. I think that should be the last enemy here. We've seen Hunting Hounds. We've seen Heavy Armor. We've seen Corporals. So, yeah, that would be it. That Pounce attack that Gao just blocked is super powerful. It will kill you. So I'll just like punch my desk and it hurt. <laughs> I do that too much nowadays. All right, I think that's it for enemies around here. We can't sprint here. I think you can't even sprint if you have uh, the sprinting shoes. Now this guy's always here. I think you can avoid him, but you don't really want to. He's like one of the few enemies that is only here and will appear on the Velt later. You can steal a... I'm gonna put Stray Cat on Gao. You can steal a Mithril Vest from him. There you go. Uh, well, I forget what else you can steal. Fuck! <laughs> All right, well, first death of the event. And actually, you know what? I will do this, because I am afraid Terra's gonna get her ass into it. I could have put Lock in the back row, though he would be doing half damage, so I don't really want to do that. But now that we have the Mithril Vest, we can just clearly go to town with them. He has 1,300 HP, and Gao will two-shot him with, you know, Cat Scratch, so I'm not too worried about that. And he's dead already, so... Let's go heal up a little bit. I don't really care too much about my MP. We're not going to be using magic all that much in the next battle, which is against Kefka himself. We want to steal from Kefka, and we want to get Runic on uh, pretty fast. And then we want Stray Cat on. Kefka has 3,000 HP, so I do run the risk of Gao killing him uh, in a couple of turns before I get... Well, I was hoping for an Elixir, but a High Aether will do just as fine. So Kefka's main attacks are... Well, most powerful attacks are his magic attacks. If you have Celis in your party, he is pretty much neutered. He can't really do much. Thankfully, he's slow enough that Celis, even if her runic is disabled or used up, uh, her turn will be just around the corner. And it is Locke's turn, so we'll get that. Kind of wish I had Bazak on him, but oh well. We'll just keep Celis on standby. If you don't have runic, this can be a very hard battle because his spells hurt a lot. This should be it, I think. Yeah. Grr. Don't think you've won. And we get a peace ring, which I'll probably never use. Grr. I won't forget this. And like good villain, he d disappears. There's always two sound effects when he teleports. And I don't know why, because there is no other enemy on that field. I, I don't know. Where's the Espa? Is it all right? I'm assuming so? Unless they did like a freaking hike around Narsh through the mountains to the Espers, which probably would have been easier for them. Phew, the Espa's safe. It also appears to be alive. How do you know that, Cyan? How can you tell that? Is that even possible? I mean, it's frozen in a block of ice, so it's kind of iffy. Terra, what is it? 
She's failing blue. No! I didn't overreact much, Terra? Jeez, you almost killed three of them. I like how Gao's just standing there like, uh, yeah, I got this. One-handed. Terra and the Esper. They're reacting to each other. What? What is this? I'm feeling. Huh? What? What's going on? Please tell me. Who am I? Who? Terra. The Esper. It's responding to her. That's why we're up here. Remember, we wanted this thing to respond to her. Terra. Get away from that thing! <laughs> she was naked for a second. Such a simple but very effective little voice acting there. Turned into a save point and flew off. I mean, good talent, really. The use of audio here, that the scream and then just the silence breeze wind noise as she's flying around is just really effective. One of those things like a little goes a long way. Ugh. Are you awake? Where's Terra? She turned into a something and flew off. She looked like... She looked like an Esper. Did she now? Because the only Esper we've seen is a giant frozen bird. Terra looked nothing like that. Locke, are you okay? Apparently he's partially Australian now. Something's happened to Terra. There must be some sort of connection between her and that Esper. We need to find her. Witnesses say she went streaking westwards across the sky, beyond Figaro. We gotta hurry. I promise I'd protect her. Locke. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. The Empire will be back again for that Esper. And someone needs to protect Bannon. Because we'll get a game over if he dies. A former Imperia soldier. But still, we must help her. Let's split up. Those who aren't searching for terror will stay here to guard against further attacks. Figaro Castle could shuttle others to the Western Province. It shouldn't be hard to track down clues in Collagen or Jido. Jidor, I think it's Jidor, as to Terra's whereabouts. Wow, blah, 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 blah. All right, so, Locke, Edgar. No, no, Edgar, you go down there. Thank you. How about Sabin in there and Celis? We're leaving Narcissus protection up to the very best. That's right, Gal. Cyan, you take a tea break. Actually, I'm just going with this party for right now because there is a few things we can do with this party that we can't with others. Excuse me, coming through, move. Hello? Oh, <laughs> I'm like, why can't I move? I heard terror turn into a ball of light and shot away towards the west. Perhaps someone at Figaro Castle saw where she went. All right, Elvis, get out of the way. There we go, Bannon, please find Terra. The future of the world rests in her hands. I'm not concerned at her, about her in one bit. I'm just really concerned about the future. Good going, Bannon. All right, there are some treasures we can get here in Nosh. Some very nice treasures, actually. First things first, let's talk to this guy. Hi. Only the chest in the back corner is locked. I wonder if there's a way to open it. I don't know, a key? Reflect ring? Thief's bracers? Hyper wrist. 
it's locked. The thief's knife. Earrings, which will come in handy. That's our third pair, I think. 5,000 gil. And I think that is it. This clock doesn't have an elixir in it, right? I did not want to talk to you. Go away. There is an elixir in a clock here in town, actually. So we should go get that as well. Uh, Equipment-wise, I don't think the armor shop has anything too new or useful. We can go check that out. Do you say anything? Nosh is a neutral city. We've taken no part in the war, yet still we are not spared from the Emperor's aggression. Yeah, that's what evil empires do. They attack you until you're theirs. Oh, uh, actually, yeah, we can get mithril shields. I guess I want... Two more of those. I mean, I can get three more of those to do with the full. Yeah, uh, yeah, just do two. Yeah, that's all we need. I'll put that on to Sabin and Edgar. No, maybe just Edgar. I don't know. Uh, don't stay at the end. If you need to stay at the end to rest up the heel, uh, you can just come into the relic shop. There's actually no wait. Not the relic shop, the weapon shop. God dang it. God dang it. I fucked it. Yeah, we come into the weapon shop and we just go around. And we're like, hey, old man, I'm sleeping in your goddamn bed. Um, There's also the training school that you can go to that has the hailing point there. So Narsh's, Narsh, Narsh's, Narsh has two hailing points that are completely free, opposed to the inn, which I think costs 200 gil. Uh, Weapon-wise, we can buy air knives now and a flail for Celis, which might come in handy. We can also buy two morning rings for luck uh, if you want to put them in the back row. I'm just going to buy one. It is technically his strongest weapon to this point, but I am going to put on the thief knife, which increases his agility by quite a lot, and the morning uh, moon ring, not morning ring, blade. Now, if you want, you can take the ninja gear from Sabin and put it onto Locke also, and his speed will be even higher. I saw me some moogles playing with one of them big old yetis the other day. Of course, no one believes me, hick. <clears throat> I wasn't calling him a hick. I was just saying hick instead of doing a hiccup. It's actually kind of hard to mimic an uh, actual hiccup. Hey, Elder. To be honest, I'm still not sure what I should do. I want to avoid war. But on the other hand, just sitting here and getting taken over doesn't seem to be an option. All the civilians are like, oh, we want our freedom, but... Uh, ruling a city is hard, goddamn elder. All right, so you can talk to a bunch of NPCs here. They all have something somewhat interesting to say. The only thing that Esper's brought us is trouble with the Empire. Curse the day that they dug that freakish thing up. Figaro Castle can burn through the sand all the way to west, all the all the way west to collagen, collagen, whatever it's pronounced. That's incredible. It's one of those things when you do uh, like recorded let's plays or playthroughs or whatever you want to call them. When you start actually having to pronounce the words from these JRPGs, it just shows how bad you are at speaking. And by you, I mean me, of course, because that would be weird if your voice was in my video. Also kind of impressive, given how I am recording this four hours before I upload it at four in the morning. I'm an adult. I can choose when to wake up, goddammit. You know, I don't think I actually went over the thief bracers and the, the thieves knife. So the thief's knife, it will randomly steal, like it will randomly do the mug command. You'll jump over to the enemy, you'll slash them, and you have a chance to steal an item. The Thief Bracers increase your steel ability by quite a lot. It's actually pretty useful to have if you, and increases your speed by five. That's actually pretty good too. But uh, it's useful to have on if you're gonna be stealing a lot of items. And I'll be putting it on eventually to help Locke with his stealing, but as of right now, I don't really need it. I mean, I, the speed buff could help, but it's not fantastically noticeable, I should say. Ah, this is just like old times. I'm gonna wander around for a bit. All right, if you bring Sabin here, he wanders off. If you have Edgar here, then you can go over here and sleep in the serving quarters because that's the kind of king Ed Edgar is. Kind of creepy, really. You'll get a cutscene. Hmm. 
castle hasn't changed much. And yet it's different. Mom and Dad are gone. Nothing can really ever be the same. Not after what happened. Tonight, where she's been, so if he should... No, you're wrong! It's not true! Priestess the King, he's... Sabin! Sabin! Dad couldn't have. Edgar. So, Dad didn't make it. Edgar, here you are. Your father just said he would trust figure out to two of you. Those were his final words. You all make me sick. Everyone's saying that the Empire had Dad poisoned, and the only thing any of you can think about is who'll be the next king? No one's even sad. None of you probably cared when Mom died after we were born, either. That's not... You're just as bad as the rest of them. Sabin. Empire murderers. They won't get away with this. Priestess, leave us. Let's leave this place. Let's forget this crazy kingdom and live our lives how we want to. You said you didn't want to be king, right? A life of freedom, huh? What do you think would happen to Figaro if we both left? There'd be no one to take the throne, and Dad was counting on us to take care of the kingdom. Sabin, let's settle this with a toss of a coin. Dad gave me this one. If it's heads, you win. Tails, I win. The winner chooses whichever path he wants. No regrets, no hard feelings. Here we go. And the coin was lost in the desert. And you chose your freedom. It's already been 10 years. That little shrimp has grown to a whopping lobster. We can't really tell that, though, because they didn't fork over the money for separate sprites. And you're a king crab. He might have crabs, he might not, but yeah, I would call him a king crab. Seven, do you think Dad would be proud of me? Don't you ever doubt that. I'm sure he's beaming with pride wherever he is. 10 years. Where's the time going? I ask myself that every goddamn morning when I cry in the shower. I mean, no, I don't. Here's to a couple confused grown ups. Drink. Here's to Dad. To Mum and to Figaro. And with that, we're going to end the episode. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the episode, press the like button below. If you're not subscribed yet, why don't you head over to my video section, check out some of my other content, and see if it's to your liking. Once again, thank you for watching. I hope you all have a great day.